If you are brand new to wildlife photography, this video is for you because I have 10 tips for beginning wildlife photographers coming up right after this. Hi guys, my name is Eddie, and on this channel, I not only teach you about nature, but I teach you how to enjoy nature, so hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications. I'm a biologist, but I also love taking photographs of wildlife. I've been doing it for years, and if you have never picked up a camera before, this will be a great video to get you started. So let's get into it. My first tip is to learn generally how a camera works and learn what aperture, shutter speed, and ISO all mean and what they do to an exposure of a photograph. These three variables make up what a lot of people like to call the exposure triangle. If you have never done any photography before, it's really important that you understand these things because these three factors will affect both how light or dark your photograph is and the quality of your image. You can manipulate these three things in different modes in your camera. When you first get your camera and you start shooting in the automatic mode, you can get some decent photos in automatic and that's totally fine to practice just holding your camera or other elements of wildlife photography but if you want to ever get past the beginner stage you have to really understand in depth what these three variables are and you're going to have to understand how you can manipulate these different variables in different modes of your camera so i'm not really going to explain what these three things are nor am i going to explain how you can manipulate these or i'm not going to give any of my recommendations on different modes to use i will reserve that for another video and when i'm done with that video i will put the card right here i just think that whole video deserves another topic of conversation because for wildlife photography the settings on your camera that you should care about are definitely different than other types of photography like landscape photography and just to add to this point just in general try to learn what all of the settings on your camera mean i know that it can be kind of a daunting task and that reading your manual can be pretty boring but i would just say bit by bit every single time you go out into the field just try to learn something new about the settings on your camera and that brings me to my next point which is always check the settings on your camera because when you are out in the field and you're moving around you never know when your arm might brush up against your camera you might hit a button or twist the dial on something you might not be in the mode that you thought you were this happens to me a lot on my camera with my vibration reduction uh, a lot of lenses will have a switch for the vibration reduction so many times for some apparent reason i often find that that button is turned off which i always want that to be turned on to reduce the vibration to make my photos clear to make my video footage less shaky the moment a wild animal shows up a lot of times you won't have enough time to change those settings before the wild animal runs away so just make sure that all your settings are set and constantly be checking them in the field so that you always know that you're in those settings that you should be my next tip is to get out during what they call the golden hours of daylight which is the few hours around dusk and the few hours around dawn. It's around these times when you have the best, warmest colors. If you're photographing in the middle of the day, your photos will more likely be overexposed, which means that the sun can create strong highlights and then really dark shadows. This is a pretty basic photography tip that they will teach you right away in any intro photography class. But this is also a really good tip for wildlife photography anyways, because most wildlife tends to be active around dusk and dawn anyways. So for multiple reasons, it's good to get out during those hours. My next tip is one that is obvious to advanced photographers, but not as much to beginners. But you always have to be looking at your light and you have to be strategizing where your lighting is coming from. So most photos are generally the best when they're front lit. But sometimes a photo can look good when you're backlit, but you just constantly have to be thinking about where the sun is and where the light is coming from. My fifth tip is try to be on the same level as the animal. So don't be looking down on it. If you are at a higher level than the animal, the farther you are away, the less it will look like that you're on a different elevation than that animal. Just do everything you can to crouch down, get down on your belly, but just have some fun in an adventurous way to get at least on the level of an animal. And actually, if you're looking up at an animal, that can actually look pretty epic as well. So my next tip is do not let the background distract from the subject, but at the same time, you can use the background or the negative space to emphasize the subject. On this photo that I took of this bird, 
you can see that I used some negative space to really emphasize the subject. But as you can see in this photo with the light coloring and the pattern here, it kind of distracts from the subject. So the way that you can try to eliminate this distraction is just by eliminating the negative space. Or you can also just try to position yourself in the field so that you're leaving out objects in the background that are distracting. And of course, also there's lots you can do in post-production such as cropping and stuff like that. My next tip is to try to make sure that your point of focus is on the eye of the animal. The eye is definitely the most important part of the photograph to have in crystal clear focus because that is the part of the photograph that the viewer will connect with the most. And research the area of focus settings on your camera to make sure that you can keep the eye of the animal in focus without having to sacrifice the composition of the photograph. So for example, make sure that you know how to focus on the eye of the animal without it being the center point of the focus. And it's different on different cameras, you just have to learn the settings on your camera. My next tip is to do research on the animals that you're trying to photograph. You have to know where you can find the animals you wanna photograph, you wanna know what time of day they're most active, you wanna know what kind of behaviors they engage in so you can go and try to photograph those behaviors. You wanna know how fast an animal can move because if you're trying to photograph an animal in motion, that is going to affect what shutter speed you wanna set your camera at and also other settings that you're gonna set your camera at as well. My next tip is to have patience and don't have any sudden movements. A lot of times you have to wait for animals to come to you to get ideal shots of animals. I have met wildlife photographers who have literally waited for days on end just for one shot of one rare animal. So just know that wildlife can be really hard to find depending on the animal that you're trying to photograph. And also you have to stay quiet and you have to stay still for wildlife to get close enough to you for you to be able to get a photograph. And my last tip is practice. You gotta practice, practice, practice. Just like anything, with photography, practice makes better. And the more you do it, the better you will get so just never stop. And again, I will emphasize part of the very first point I made, which is try to learn something new about your camera every single time you go out into the field. And another side tip I will give is if you really wanna just get more experience photographing animals and not necessarily finding animals, but just photographing as many animals as you can so that you can learn your camera faster, photograph your pets or go to a local park where there's some water birds that are more comfortable around humans and easier to see, or just go to a zoo. Basically, you should just practice on animals that aren't necessarily wild, but are just much easier to find and photograph than animals that are rarer or are more skittish. Just so you can get more experience working with your camera and taking more photographs. That's all I have for today. If you want more videos like this, remember to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Exploring nature is always an adventure. Peace out.